Towards the later stages of the main story of Red Dead Redemption 2, the bond between the members of the Vandalin gang are nowhere near as strong as they once were. The band of outlaws have been separated into two factions, one obsessed with greed and wealth and the other with torn feelings as to where their loyalties should lie. As the gang begin to fall apart, antagonist Mike Bell brings in a couple of old associates into the mix, Joe and Cleet. Both men are immediately disliked by the majority of the gang, but for what reason? And is one of them as bad as he's made out to be? Welcome to the video, you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and today we're going to be exploring the character of Cleet, a scrawny man who may have been misjudged. If you enjoy the following, you all know what to do, and if you're new here and aren't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. I've been pondering on the idea for this video for quite some time now, and was inspired to make this after watching a content creator named Cynic, who posted their version of events on the same character in an excellently made video. I highly recommend checking out their channel, which you'll find links below in the video description, and giving them the support that they deserve. With that being said, let's begin with today's content. Cleet is brought into the Vandalin gang by former associate and running partner Micah Bell, right after the mission, The King's Son. The purpose of him being recruited is to be an extra gun for one final train heist that the gang planned to execute. Immediately disliked by Arthur and others, he situates himself always close to Micah and Joe, another former associate, always near Dutch's tent, potentially because that's where he feels most comfortable. But why the instant dislike? The obvious answer would be because of Micah's track record and the fact that the pair are former associates. This earns Cleet a distrust before he's even opened his mouth. But wouldn't that be a little contradictory from the other gang members? After all, they are all choosing to do exactly what Cleet is doing, associating with Micah Bell. We know very little of the history between the pair, so it seems a little unfair to judge him solely based on his choice of running partner when everybody else is doing the same. The Vandalins gang are considered outlaws, even by themselves, so is Cleet any different than the rest of them? He's here for the exact same reason as everybody else, to earn a profit by taking money from old Uncle Sam. The reason he's staying by Micah's side is because of not only their history together, but the fact that he doesn't feel very welcomed by the rest of the gang. It's solely for his own comfort, as he feels more safe around him. When the gang pull off the train heist, if you watch Cleet's actions, he's the first to board the train alongside Sade the Adler, showing his willingness. Despite a few back and forths between himself and both Sadie and Arthur, he proves himself to be a valuable asset on the heist, claiming that the gang need to work together if they're going to pull this off, not against each other. His words speak truth, as this is a time when the Vandalin gang are falling apart. Of course, he was going to bicker with some of the other members, as he no doubt felt he was judged too quickly by them. Afterwards, when the gang are returning to camp, we learned that the Pinkerton Detective Agency have captured Abigail Roberts. Micah Bell convinces Dutch to leave her behind, much to the dismay of Arthur, Sadie and Tilly. Cleet goes along with this, lowering his reputation with the gang even further, but again, was he judged too quickly for this? He wasn't a close associate of the gang, he's here for profit. He hadn't been with neither the Vandalin posse or even the player for that matter and experienced the journey that everyone else had been on. Abigail meant nothing to him, he didn't know her or anybody else from the gang prior to just a few days before and with them all being nothing but nasty towards him during his short time there, of course he isn't going to care. Then we come to the final standoff, the one that separates the group once and for all. When Arthur returns after rescuing Abigail and learning that Micah Bell was the rat all along, not Molly O'Shea, the faction separates into two, with everybody choosing their final alliance. Cleet sticks by Micah's side, perceiving him as part of the bad guy group, but of course, what else was he going to do? Once more, he had no loyalty to the Vandalin gang and only really knew Micah and Joe from his past, and with Arthur and everyone else being dismissive towards him since him associating with them, even after his excellent performance during the train heist, he was always going to side with Micah. Or maybe it was just because they were the bigger party, and as we've seen him stay in his comfort zone before by hanging around Dutch's tent where he feels more secure, this may have been part of that too. Fast forward some years later in the epilogue, 
do you not safely catch wind that Cleet may be hiding out somewhere in the town of Strawberry and seek him out for information as to the whereabouts of former associate and traitor to the Vandalin gang, Micah Bell. After finding him, Cleet immediately attempts to flee. He remembers what the former gang members thought of him and knows that this situation is going nowhere good. Following a beating, he reveals some information. He tells of how he and Micah Bell fell out after Micah wanted to kill an innocent little girl and Cleet tried to stop him. Where's Micah? I don't know. I ain't seen him. We fell out. And you know what? I'm bored of this. Let's hang the bastard. What? Good idea. Oh, wait, hold on. Bring him up to the gallows. No oh, shit, no! He fled in fear of his life after the enraged Micah tried to kill him due to his actions. As he's forced up the gallows and a noose is placed around his neck, he heavily claims he's a good guy and doesn't want to reveal Micah's location as it surely would be the end of him. He just wants it out. Depending on your choice, either John or Sadie will put an end to Cleet, but was this decision a hasty one? Was he judged too quickly? During his short time with the gang, specifically during the train heist, Cleet proved himself to be a valuable asset to the group, even after receiving a cold welcome. Even though he was there with the aim of making money, so was every other person aboard that train. Nobody was different from anybody else. He was just another gun. Of course he was going to side with Micah during the final standoff, as what other choice did he really have? Years later, he tried to save the little girl from Micah, even if it meant his own demise. This shows that he had compassion, and wasn't as evil as he was perceived to be. In my opinion, Cleet wasn't one of the bad guys, he just followed what he knew and felt loyal to, Micah Bell. It's a somewhat similar tale of blind loyalty, just like the relationship between Arthur Morgan and Dutch Vanderland, following them up until the day they crossed the line. With Dutch, it was his choice to leave Abigail behind, and with Cleet, it was Micah trying to kill the little girl. So to summarise, was Cleet judged too quickly by those around him whose actions were very similar? In my opinion, yes. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, you all know what to do. If you're new here, and this is the first video of mine that you've seen, please consider subscribing to the channel. What do you feel about the character of Cleet? Do you agree that he wasn't as bad a person as first perceived? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out Cynic's channel, which you'll find links below in the video description. Their content is something I highly recommend. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.